Bow season is just around the corner, and I know it's hard to think about hunting season when the temperatures are constantly above 90 degrees, but bow season is literally a little over a month away. So it's time to start thinking about scouting and figuring out where you're gonna put your tree stands. And most of your scouting is going to start by looking at an aerial map, and it's a very good place to start. Uh, you're looking at this aerial map to find the pinch points, the funnels of the habitat and terrain features that are gonna close in this deer movement. However, there are a lot of things you miss by only looking at something from a thousand foot view. Now, you might be able to see some habitat features from an aerial map, however, there's a lot of things you can't see. You can't see the type of vegetation that's there. You can't see these spots where deer are likely to bed, which oaks are producing acorns, how the terrain actually lays itself out. Because if you look at an aerial map, you see the contour lines and you think, oh, it's a rolling hill, but you might get there and it's a cliff that drops off and you can't exactly hunt there effectively. So you really have to get down there, get your boots on the ground and figure out where it is these deer are traveling. So it is important to fight the spider webs, the snakes, the mosquitoes, in order to find these high percentage areas to hunt. So in this video, we're gonna go over three scouting tips to help you effectively scout an area to hunt. But before we get into the tips, do me a favor, and if this is your first time on my channel, hit that subscribe button and make sure you click the bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a video. And the first scouting tip is to focus on those travel corridors. So I'm gonna assume you've done your homework and looked at that aerial map we talked about and identified some potential areas that could concentrate deer movement. If you haven't looked at a map yet, don't step foot out there in the woods to do your scouting because you could just be wandering around aimlessly wasting a bunch of time. So you've done your e-scouting and you have identified these potential areas and now you want to get out there and set your eyes on the land at a deer's level. See what it actually looks like. What you're looking for are those areas that deer travel routinely and you can see these sometimes from an aerial photo with those topography lines but a lot of times it might look like deer would travel there, but they actually don't. There could be something there that prevents them from going there, or more than likely, they do travel there, but there's no way for you to effectively hunt that, and you wouldn't know it unless you actually went out there and looked. So scout those pinch points, the funnels, the field edges, the drainages for active trails. Don't just assume they're gonna travel those areas. Look for the ones they're actually using. And once you find these trails, figure out why they're using it, where they're coming from and where they're going to. Because if you know why they're using this trail, it helps you to figure out when and where they will be at any given time. And usually finding out why they're using a trail means you actually have to follow it. Which brings us to tip number two, and that is to find out where the deer are likely going to bed during the winter months. This is something that I think does not get as much of the spotlight as it should. And to be honest, I think that secure cover is a lot more important than your food plots. Think of it this way. How many times do you see good deer during the summer on your trail cameras using your food plots that just disappear come fall? Or more often than not, you get those pictures of those deer using your food plot only at night. Most of the time it's because you lack good secure cover. And you could tell if an area is going to has the, at least has the potential to be good cover by looking at the vegetation type. Um, it's probably going to have bunch grasses like switchgrass, uh, little blue stem, uh, things like that. Woody sprouts, vegetation about four feet high, and sunlight. And a lot of times it's going to be your south and west facing slopes too. If you don't have these areas where you hunt and you have the ability to, you definitely need to create them. Cut down some trees. Knowing where these bedding areas are is going to be crucial to your success this fall, especially during the pre-rut and rut stages of the season. Bucks are gonna be cruising from bedding thicket to bedding thicket looking for receptive does. And if you know where these bedding thickets are, you can put yourself in a great place to intercept them when they are at their most vulnerable part of the season. And cutting down those junk trees or just finding places where there is more sunlight hitting the ground is going to allow you to find something else that deer are going to be flocking to around October. Which brings us to tip number three. And scouting tip number three is to find the good acorn producing trees. Finding the oaks that are actually producing acorns is going to be vital to having a successful fall. When you're out there scouting, make sure you bring those binoculars with you and look up. 
During October and early November, acorns are king and it pays to know where the good acorn producing trees are. Just because a tree is an oak doesn't mean it's going to produce acorns every year or even at all. Identifying the oaks that are actually producing acorns is going to help you figure out where the good spots to hunt are going to be during this portion of the year. As soon as they start raining down, those deer are going to leave your food plots, the ones that you've spent all this time cultivating, and head for those oak trees. So make sure you know where they are. It's also going to help you try to find the ones that produce a little more regularly so you can help them produce more. And you're going to do this by cutting down the junk trees around them. Give them more space to grow. Give them more sunlight and they will in turn produce more acorns. There was a study done by Dr. Craig Harper that you can find in... I'll have to find the exact issue. I'll put it down in the uh, description below where they did an experiment about how to get oaks to produce more acorns. They had a control group where they did nothing. They had a group where they fertilized and then they had a group where they would release it from the competition. And as you would suspect, the ones that were released from the competition, the ones that were given more room, given more sunlight, produced way more acorns. And what was kind of shocking is fertilizing had absolutely zero effect on acorn production. So I hope you're not wasting your money doing that. So find those good oaks and plan your routes to and from them to have these good stand sites for October and early November. And which kind of brings me to another tip that I didn't even think about is make sure you know how to identify an oak. Know how to tell which ones are in the red oak family and which ones are in the white oak family. If And if you don't know, red oaks tend to drop earlier, but they're not as preferred as white oak acorns. So if you can tell the difference, you'll be a pretty good step ahead of the competition. So that was three boots on the ground scouting tips for this season. If you have any more tips you'd like to share, make sure you put those down in the comments below. Hit that like button if you like this video, share it if you found it helpful, and make sure that you are subscribed so you can stay informed.